some SEO activities can actually harm your Google ranking. So as we've seen, there's lots of factors that can positively affect how your website shows up in the search engine results. But it's also important to realize there are other factors that can negatively affect how your particular uh, pages are going to show up in the search engine results. Now, a lot of these factors are common sense. It's vitally important that you actually read the Google Webmaster Guidelines and actually act on their advice. Buying in links. Most people realize that links to your website is a good idea, but what most people don't realize is that it has to be the right sort of links. It has to be quality links. So simply buying in links is a bad idea. Again, if you go and read the advice from Google and the Google Webmaster um, Guidelines, you'll find that Google specifically warns you against buying in links from third parties. So just basically don't do it. Um, the sort of things you might get are spam emails offering you um, a whole load of links for, um, say, 20 bucks. Um, just say no. Using excessive keywords within your picture alt tags or indeed in your text. You must make sure that when you use your keywords, you use them wisely, you don't overdo it. So for instance, um, a lot of people, if they're doing their own SEO, they'll come across this idea of alt tags or alternative tags for pictures, and immediately they'll just start cramming their keywords in there. And instead of putting a natural sounding phrase as the alt text, they'll just simply put a list of keywords, possibly separated by commas. And this is the sort of thing that will actually get you uh, penalized by Google. Google doesn't like this attempt at spamming. In the same way, the actual text within the body of your website, uh, again, make sure you use natural sounding phrases. So again, if you've got a plumbing business in Perth, um, don't just simply have a page that lists every single um, suburb you can think of on the one page. You've got to be a little bit more subtle than that. So if you take that example, you have got a plumbing business. Uh, what you'd want to do is to have um, maybe a couple of suburbs mentioned on the page then on a different page you could mention a couple of other suburbs and you just kind of work them into the text. Excessive doorway pages. Again, this is another technique that uh, if you do a bit of research on Google, people tell you it's a really good idea. It isn't. It's a really bad idea. Uh, doorway pages are basically pages um, either on your website or on other associated websites which you've created specifically to attract the attention of Google and the other search engines. And uh, this is something that will definitely get you penalized these days. So create pages for your visitors, not for the search engines. Duplicate content. Um, if you just got the one website, make sure that every single page has unique content. Don't, for instance, just copy a chunk of text from your home page and paste it into some of your other pages. Make sure that um, you, you know you use the same words maybe, but in a different order and you know, using different phraseology and possibly different terms. So again, if we take the example of a plumber, there are various associated words you can use. So you could have plumber, plumbing, plumbers, um, and associated words. And again, if you use something like the Google Ad Tools, this will give you um, some insight into some of the alternative phrases you can use. Broken links. You've probably all visited websites where you click on something and it just doesn't work. It gives you what's called a 404, a broken link error. And uh, this is really annoying for a visitor. And Google also doesn't like broken links. Again, if you actually go to Google, look at the Webmaster Guidelines, it specifically mentions it doesn't like broken links. Now, these days, there's no excuse for a broken link within a website. Um, most web creation tools can uh, check for broken links for you. Um, but what you should always do is actually check the live version of your website and uh, just run um, one of many of the free programs available and just check for broken links. And when you've found broken links, if there are any, make sure you go and fix them immediately. Now, links to and from bad websites or bad neighborhoods. Uh, Google has um, a list of websites uh, it's none too pleased with, uh, websites that might have um, I mean, malware on them, or they're just known as spammy websites. And basically, if you link to that sort of website, uh, that can harm your SEO these days. So what you should do is make a list of all the external websites you're linking to and just go and check them out. I mean, a simple way is just simply go to the, the website you're linking to and just check out the page rank. If the page rank is good, chances are Google approves of that particular page. And it's fine if it's got a page rank of zero or even worse, NA, uh, remove that link immediately. Uh, in the same way, you should check for incoming links. So 
Um, in the past, bad incoming links didn't affect you. As I've already mentioned, these days you can get penalised for having links from dodgy sites to your website. So it's a two-way thing. Make sure you've got good links going from your website to other websites if you've got external links. And also check who's linking to you and how they've linked and where they're linking from. And it takes a bit of time, but it's well worth doing. Now, reciprocal links. In the past, this was highly recommended by SEO folks. And the idea of a reciprocal link is if, if you've got a website, you contact someone else on the website and say, hey, let's swap website links. So you'd link from your website to somebody else's website, and they'd link from their website to your website. Well, these days, reciprocal links are basically worth zero because one cancels out the other. If you're looking at links, the only links that matter as far as SEO concerned, is concerned is basically links from other people's websites to your website. That's what matters. And remember, they have to be good quality links from good areas, from good websites. You've probably all seen websites where they've got horrendous typing errors on them or grammatical errors. So just like if you're writing um, a documented word, make sure you spell check your website uh, before you publish it. And when you create new content, again, just take the time just to run the spell checker over it and just make sure it's all in order and actually read through it and make sure it sounds, um, sounds natural. Um, again, Google can penalize you if you've got loads and loads of bad spellings on a website. Uh, do be aware, of course, there are international spellings. So, for instance, if you're looking at, say, an Australian market or, say, a UK market, then, say, the word uh, organize would have an S in it, whereas um, organization would have an S in it, whereas uh, in America it would have a Z in it. So, basically, there's these two alternative spellings, so you won't get penalized for that. But, by and large, the rule is that um, wherever your um, particular um, website is hosted, that really should be uh, where you localize the, the spelling for. That's probably the best way of doing it. Now, Google penalties. In the past, Google used to reward you, so there was a lot of carrot, but there wasn't much stick. These days, it's um, getting a bit more aggressive, so Google will actually penalize you um, for activities it doesn't really approve of. So there's a whole bunch of things, for instance, bad linking, uh, links from bad websites, that will definitely get you penalized. Things like slow loading websites, um, that could involve a penalty these days. There could be um, penalties for things like um, excessive numbers of links on a page. There could be penalties for maybe about bad spelling. Um, there's a whole load of things. So basically, give Google what it wants, and then it's going to reward you rather than penalize you. It's as simple as that. Um, as I've mentioned once or twice, there are examples of large corporates who have actually been penalized by Google. So, for instance, a famous example is BMW in Germany, who um, actually got completely thrown out of the Google index at one point um, because they had uh, an excessive number of doorway pages that had been created. And more recently, Interflora in the UK, again, was completely delisted from the UK version of Google, uh, again, allegedly for using um, links or getting links in a way that Google didn't really approve for. In effect, apparently, they were um, buying links in uh, by giving rewards for links, allegedly. Um, so again, if that can happen to a corporate, it can easily happen to you. So the golden rule is, look what Google wants, make sure you've got good information, and give Google what it wants. It's as simple as that.